Welcome back guys to another GTA video and in today's one we are going to be looking over and beginning the scrapyard business which was released as part of the winter DLC. Now you do need to come to this location to kick things off and then contact Yusuf Amir. So good to hear that voice again, but once you've completed that call, you can go on to Maze Bank Foreclosures and buy one of the salvage yards. Now there are four in the map itself. There is one at La Puerta, one at Strawberry and one at Murrieta Heights, as well as one away up the top in Palito Bay. But I decide to go with this one at Murrieta Heights for 2.42 million. I'm going to throw on the dark grey tint which does cost 75,000. There then is an option to get trade rates. Now what that, this does, it does give you discounts on all claims with the Moors Mutual and on repairing the vehicles with LS Customs. So I'm not sure if it's worth it, but I got it anyway for the 450,000. And there it is, the tow truck back in the game. Unfortunately, it is not available for free roam, but I do buy the better version at 1.1 million. And I also collect the wall safe for 750,000 as well as the staff member for 625,000. So the full business coming in at just under five and a half million GTA dollars. Is it going to be worth it? Only time will tell. But once you've got it, you can head over to the location. And once you get there, you'll get another call from Yusuf. And once that call's finished, the scrapyard business will open up where you can get access. And so begins one of the best cutscenes that I have ever seen in GTA. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to play the music in the background. I won't spoil it for you, but just make sure you get into the, the scrapyard and give this one a listen. It's certainly worth it. It is also quite a lengthy cutscene, but I won't play it all for you, don't want to spoil it. But here is just a wee <laughs> snippet for you. <coughs> I think Yusuf is quickly going to become a fan favourite, and certainly Rockstar did have to do some improvements after the Dax characters, and this is Santa characters that they released in the more recent DLCs. But once the cutscenes played through, you will have Jamal here just explaining some of the business for you and how it actually works. <laughs> and then a little bit of going in 60 seconds inspiration there with the black light covering all the planning works. But once that cutscene has played through, you will eventually get your hands on that planning computer and you can start up the first mission. And we are in fact going to go through the first mission that I completed. Logging onto the computer, you do get to choose which vehicle you wish to steal, but it seems to generate one of the missions at random. And this one is the gangbanger robbery that I start off with. And to kick things off, we do have a scope out mission where we are sent over to Mission Row Police Station to scope out the station itself. And unfortunately, I cancelled that call there from Jamal, so I missed out on all the dialogue that he was given. But we do head over to MRPD, and once we get there, we are tasked with 
taking some photographs. Now, this is what not to do. Oh, do not idea. go and land directly on the roof of the police station or you will become detected. I think the aim of the game there is just to try and do it as stealthily as possible. So, you do need to take some pictures of the rooftop area, including the helicopter, the ventilation system, and one of the back entrance to the police station itself. So I do just, just go for it basically. Get on top of the roof, take all the bullets, but try and get the, the camera shots while I'm up here. So the first one there is of the ventilation system. And it does give you those big blue pointy arrows showing you what you should be taking pictures of. Now I couldn't quite see the helicopter from this vantage point, so I just swung myself back out further away so as I can get a clear shot of the helicopter there before dropping down to the bridge to get a shot of the rear entrance to the MRPD. The scope out and setups for this mission were all done in free roam. I wasn't a friend only session while I was doing this but that could end up quite interesting if you're trying to do this in a public lobby so probably best to stick to an invite only or a friend lonely session. But well, getting down to the bridge, we do get to take that final picture that's required of the rear entrance to MRPD and then we can make our escape and lose the cops. Once we've lost the cops though, we head back to the scrapyard and make a start on the next missions. Getting back onto the planning computer after we've done the scope out, we can see the full extent of everything that we do need to do. As you can see on the upper right there, there are some tasks that need to be completed. There are four of them. The, we then have two planning works on the bottom left and centre that are required. And then there is a third optional planning work on the bottom right. I am going to do all of the setups all apart from the masks. So starting things off with the first required planning work. So being tasked with stealing a police chopper, we head over to the first location which is at the Weasel News Building. We then need to hack into the signal box and just walking our way around we soon recognise that it is the same signal box from the Kale Perico heist and indeed it is the same hack that is required to be completed. So straightforward enough finishing this one off and once it is completed we come out and we are given a cutscene showing us the location of the police chopper that we need to steal. Coming out of that shortcut scene, we can then make our way over to the hospital and get the helicopter. Now, on the way over there, it does tell you to try and be as stealthy as possible. So, climbing up the ladder this time rather than going straight on, but straight away I'm detected by that cop there who suddenly sprang onto the minimap without any warning. So, once again, we are going in loud and hard taking out all the cops that we can on our way through and up to get the helicopter climbing up the ladders a couple more cops to take out before we can actually get into the helicopter itself and make our escape the Amagio but I don't know if it, I don't know if the car I think the car might be tied to or might not be tied to specific missions I'm doing the police one Finally jumping in the helicopter and making my escape, all that's left to do is lose the cops and then deliver the helicopter to the marked location so as it's ready for the main finale of the heist itself. Once I had got the helicopter delivered coming out of the mission it was then that I noticed the tasks that were on the setup board on the upper right corner had actually appeared on the minimap as three green duffel bags. You can see them flashing away there and on checking the main map you can see there is one in the Cypress Flats area of the city and then the further two in the main part of the city itself. So jumping down to the first one in Cypress Flats as that's the closest one I'm at. We get there and we need to toggle right on the D-pad to activate the call from Jamal. Just in case things go south. Now I had my buddy over at Ammunition 
arrange a little spread for you. All you got to do is pick them up. And with that phone call completed, we can then make our way down to the ammunition store that's marked on the map. And as you can see on the bottom of the screen there, we do need to locate the unmarked weapons. So having a good search about, it turns out they are in the shooting range. And it does look, I don't recognise that colour of duffel bags. That does look like a new colour of duffel bag. But making our way out, we can then go and stash them under the bins outside MRPD for later in the main mission. Now that those weapons are stashed, we can then make our way up to the second marker on the minimap, which is located at LS Customs. With the phone call completed, we can then make our way into the location, which is right next to the LS Customs in the central of the city. And it is just another tuner shop interior, where we do need to take out all the enemies. But once you've taken them all out, you then have the choice of getaway vehicle. As you can see on the minimap, there are six blue duffel bags marked on the minimap, indicating that you can in fact steal any one of these vehicles as your getaway vehicle. So I decide to go for the Granger on this occasion. And once we've jumped in, a couple more enemies spawn in, but we can quite easily just drive out and make our escape. Now, once you are out, you are given a yellow marker to follow. Once you get to that location, you've got three points in which you can stash the getaway vehicle. I didn't really put much thought into which location to use, so I just looked at the map and selected this one as it looked as if it was the closest to MRPD itself. But once that was done, we are up and away to the final green bag on the minimap, activating the phone call from Jamal again. I'm thinking we'll use stun guns to take care of any cops you run into. Now we're not there to shoot up a whole precinct, and we don't want anyone to shoot my guy during the escape. Now I got a tip on a security guards who should have some stun guns in their car. I got a license plate here for you. And once again, once that phone call has been completed, you will get a location on the map to head over to, to search for the target vehicle. Once you've found the vehicle, it's not actually to be stolen, as I thought. You do in fact need to search the boot of the vehicle to retrieve the stun guns for the main robbery. Breaking into the boot, we can then grab the case that has the stun guns in it and head back to the salvage yard. That is those three option, uh, three tasks now completed and it would be good to know if those are optional or not. I'll need to try that out on the next one. But getting the stun guns back, we can head back over to the planning computer and start up the second planned work. This one is called Tactical Gear and once we commence it, we'll get the phone call from Jamal again. So it is tactical gear and the gas grenades that we're going to be picking up here. Now this one was a bit odd, there, you can see from the minimap itself there are red dots indicating the enemies on the ground, however they do not have any cones of vision. So trying to take them out sneakily with my suppressed AP pistol, it didn't work. As soon as I fired a shot they were alerted to me being in the area. But taking out the three guards on the roof we headed inside and it is again the special vehicle warehouse that is used as the interior here. So taking out the enemies, once they are all gone we are looking for the tactical gear. Now it's not actually the riot vans that you need to steal, if you go to the rear of the riot vans itself you will see a white indicator and opening up the rear doors you do indeed find all the tactical gear. It's then at this point you can then steal the riot van with the tactical gear in it and make your escape back to the salvage yard. Coming out of the warehouse there, there are still a number of guards outside but you don't need 
need to worry about them as you are in an armoured vehicle and we do in fact get that back to the salvage yard. Jumping back onto the planning computer, I am in fact going to do the optional mission as well. This one is called Disrupt Equipment and on coming out we do get another phone call from Jamal. So once that phone call is completed we can then head over to the LSPD lockup over at Del Perro. There are a couple of cops that we do need to take out before entering the lockup itself. And again another reused interior. Here it is the CEO crate warehouse. But once inside we can take out the three cops fairly easily before we can destroy the LSPD equipment itself. Now, knowing this from one of the KO setups, I do throw a sticky bomb and go and hide in the corner so that I don't get blown up myself. So once we've destroyed that, we do need to find the schedule. And luckily for me, I head straight to it and find the clipboard on these shelves here before making my escape and <laughs> get lucky there that one that bike explodes before I actually reach it and coming out of the warehouse uh, we are in fact contacted by Jamal once again we are then tasked with going and destroying the three other shipments now luckily for me I did have the three shipments all That's down around about the, the city so not too far to travel. So similar to the Duggan's missions in the casino heist, just simply fly over, easy enough with the Mark II, and destroy them with the missiles. I do eventually reach that final target, and it was straightforward enough taking it out. And with that one gone, that is all the setups now completed for the gangbanger robbery. So heading over to the planning computer, we can then start the robbery itself. And so we can jump on the Mark II, head over, pick up the chopper and then take the chopper all the way over to MRPD and land it on the roof. We can then incapacitate the cop, as Jamal says, using the stun gun. Once he's down, we can then go and use the gas grenades and get them into the air vents. There are four areas where we do need to throw the gas grenades in, and they do tend to bounce off the top, so do take your time, make sure they do go into the air vents. Once the green arrow disappears, you do know that you've got it in the air vent. But working our way round, we've got three on the main part of the roof up here and then there is one just slightly on the lower level over in the corner. Once we've got them all in the air vents, we then get a cutscene showing one of the cops coming out being affected by the gas that we've just thrown in. It is at this point we can finally make our way inside the police station and all the way down to the ground level. Once we're at this level, we are tasked with finding the cell keys that are required to open up the jail cell holding King Tiny. Working our way through this section here, there are just two cops that we do need to take out and by the looks of it, one shot from the stun gun will incapacitate the, the cops whereas yeah. a second shot will take them out altogether. And not knowing about the challenges at the end, I do in fact take out all the cops using the stun gun on this level. We do eventually find the cell keys, and it's at this point that we can then make our way down to the basement where the cells are located to free King Tiny. There is only one cop down on this level, but once we take him out we can make our way round to the marker. We then get instructed to access the computer to open up the locks. The 
nothing new with the hack here itself, it is just one of the later tumblers, but once we've got that, the cell doors do in fact open. We've got one more cop that does come down at this point, so I'll take him out before we go and rescue King Tiny from the cell. Again, two shots just to take him out altogether, so we don't need to worry about him coming back at us. But we can then free King Tiny from his jail cell. And once King Tiny's unlocked that door there, we can then make our escape. There are, however, a couple of cops that do come in. One of them backs away, but I do take out this other cop. We can then make our way outside of the police station using the rear entrance here. Now there is one more cop that backed away. I think he is hiding behind the car there. He does get a couple of shots off at me. But at this point, I decide I'll try and melee him and it just didn't seem to work for him, it didn't want to work at that point. So, back to the stun gun. He did get a couple of shots on me, but I'm not sure why it didn't really do that much damage to me. But we do get him taken out, and then we can access the weapon stash that we placed here earlier. And looking at the minimap at this point, you can see everything looks fairly quiet, up until we blow up the control box for the gates. As you can see, the cops just start flooding in and we cannot access this cop car here to make our escape. Oh, we do need to fight our way out and this is where <laughs> the fun begins. One thing I didn't notice at this point is if you look in the bottom right of the screen there you do have a health bar for King Tiny and if he does take too much damage it will be mission failed. But we fight our way out of the rear car park and make our way along the road here taking out the cops as we make our way along towards the getaway vehicle. As you can see I took a reasonable amount of damage there going all the way into the red but managed to save myself. And I am still unaware about that health bar in the bottom right. I'm just f fully focused on taking out the cops. King Tiny seems to be handling himself fairly well. As you can see he is only starting to take a little bit of damage now. But we make our way along to the escape vehicle and jump in. But unfortunately King Tiny was quite a good distance away. He was too busy taking out the cops and taking a few hits. He did eventually try to get in the, the Granger before I knocked him over. And there was a slight delay until he got in the Granger. But if you look at his health bar, he did take quite a bit of damage trying to get in the car. We do eventually get away and we head to the tunnels to make our escape from the cops. Once we do in fact lose the cops, we do get tasked with the taking King Tiny down to LSIA uh, so as he can cool. make his escape on his helicopter. Once we're at the airport, we can hit that yellow marker and King Tiny can make his escape on somewhat of a broken helicopter. As you can see, one set of blades not moving at all, what but the, the other fuck? ones are spinning away. He does, however, give us the location of the vehicle that we were after in the first place. And so we can then make our way out of LSIA and we will get the marker for the location of the vehicle. And it is in fact protected by a whole squad of ballers. So once again, we are on the offensive and it is just a case of taking out all the ballers that are protecting the vehicle. Oh. Die, die, die. The one downside to all this gunfire out in the open streets is it does spook the NPCs and especially those driving the vehicles. And unfortunately this white buffalo oh, you. <laughs> just took me out. Thankfully I didn't lose all my health. I went all, down, all the way down to probably about 1 HP but did survive it. And we made our way up and took out the rest of the ballers. The weapon that I'm using here is the new battle rifle and you can purchase it from the gun van which today is available on Mirror Park. We finally cleared out all the ballers though and I decided to do a little bit of testing here as as soon as I jumped into the vehicle we had a couple of ballers coming at us in vehicles so I thought I wonder if it is the same three sets of vehicles that come after us and indeed it was. So. Rather than take any damage on the drive down, I just hung about and took out those three sets of vehicles. 
before making our way like down car. back to the salvage yard. We finally reach the salvage yard and hit that marker and get the Omagio inside the warehouse. And that is it, mission complete, where we get another cutscene, which is just fantastic. Again, I won't show it all, I don't want to spoil it too much for you, but it is a really good cutscene. Once that cutscene has played out, we do get the mission pass screen and a list of challenges to aim for during the mission, none of which I actually obtained, so that's one to aim for next time. But there you have it guys, that is it for me for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, do leave a like, and if you are new here, why not consider subscribing. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.